No. Good afternoon and welcome back to Planet Craft. I'm Natalie and I'm going to be taking you through making some embellishments today. So I've already compiled a whole pile of scraps. I have some spare die cuts and I also have some little stamps to play with for sentiments. Now if you haven't got any little stamps you can just um, print some text from Word and you can do the same technique as what I'm going to do with these. So, let's get started. First of all, who's in the room? Let's, let's see some uh, Tracy's here and then Zena is here. Hello, who? We have some others, but I don't know who. Okay, Ian's man in the comments, so if you let us know if you're in the room, we can say hi. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comments and we will answer them as soon as possible. There is a slight time delay between what I'm saying and when you're hearing it, so it's only about 30 seconds I think. We so. have Sandra South. Hello. And Carol. Hi Carol. So I have lots of different textures to play with. I even have some alcohol ink on some Koji cardstock with some foil. And I have pattern papers to play with. And I think I'm going to start with a few die cuts that I found kind of lingering in my scrapbox. So let's clear the path a little and we can get started. So I'm just going to put this big piece of the away. I'll just have for some lights ready for Saturday. Cool, cool, cool. So we are running a paid workshop on Saturday and Sunday this weekend. So if you would like to get involved, there's a link in the events page on Planacraft. Uh, can you let us know if you can see this? Okay, I'm in playing up a bit. Ooh, so the paid workshop is about um, creating your own layer shadow boxes. So we take you right from creating your file. Sarah Lou's here too. Hi Sarah Lou. I think we're just having a few issues with the preview hour and so if you can let us know that everything's okay and I can continue. So I'm just going to pull out a few random pieces to play with. Uh, let's go for a leaf as well. Okay. Now up on the group I've posted um, an embellishments page that we can actually play with. So if I go into pattern and retrieve from up on the internet. You want the close up camera? Yes please. Okay, I've brought in a whole load of little shapes that we can play with. So if I get into this one, and hmm, let's zoom in a bit. So uh, Sandra says it looks fine, Tracy says it, I can see okay, but it's frozen a few times. Okay. And your mum says hello. Hello mum. So I'm just going to pull out a few of these flower shapes over to one side that I definitely want to keep in for now. Mm, and let's says, go to the heart. So you can see the camera keeps stop starting. Oh. Why is it all the way to the afternoon one? I don't know. Let me get back to Facebook and see what that's doing. Okay, so what I've done is select everything else that I don't want to use. And I can just hit delete and OK. Yeah, it dropped out a couple of times. How's it going now? Okay, I'll carry on on the, on the basis that it's all okay. Settling down. So I'm going to bring in my first scrap, and as you can see, we've got lots of holes. Sarah, does it keep freezing in cousin because you let you in play this morning? Told you. <laughs> <laughs> I did tell him afterwards what you said, Carl. <laughs> okay. Let's 
because he's left his bits still on top of my machine as well. Can't get the stuff. So I'm just going to load the mat. And that hasn't taken it quite yet. So I'm just going to unload it and we do it. See that? You jinxed it. You put it bum side in, it works better. No, it doesn't. No, it's all the way up. I'll take it back. Up from the top. I got, got it done. I had. He's been jinxing it, you see. Okay, so I'm just going to grab my ruler. Ruler? Probably. I'm just going to drag these roughly where I think they're going to end up. So, kind of over here. Now, at the moment, they're about an inch square. So, I think if I'm going to go for that heart shape, I'm going to go for a bit bigger. Okay, and then go OK again, and then we can do a background scan. Okay, so you can see those are all more or less in place, but I'm just going to bring them over so we make the most of all the card that we have available. So I'm just going to zoom in and just check the positioning of that one just there. So we can zoom all the way to 400%. Oh, let's do that again. Come on, Andy. There we go. There we go. So we can see that it's all clear of these edges. So we can go OK. And I do hope yours won't take too long, Tracy. I did pay a little bit extra for your postage, so hopefully it won't take too long to get to you. Yeah, it should be there by... End of this week. Yeah. Hopefully. The very latest. Okay, so we're on six at the moment, and that's American Cross. What do you reckon? Six or five? Six. Six. It's like Carol was asking Sarah if it's arrived. Uh, it's going to take a bit longer to get all the other side of the world. I'm going to go cut. Stands Carol, no, I'm not going back to work. My agency that I work for have lost the contract that I was working on. Um, so currently uh, looking for work rather than being employed. But we're debating at the moment whether or not I'm better off staying at home and just at working on the, the business. Short term. For the short term, at least. Um, I'm doing it that way. Yeah, so. Um, if you do enjoy our streams, we'd be very grateful for anybody buying us a coffee at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to tear that down. Now, I'm not going to trim this flush with a heart, I'm just going to kind of offset it. Why is that not updated? So, as I'm just going to cut around there, so I've got like a offset. Okay. So 
now with my flowers what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of ink detail onto that and for the colour I'm going to go for I'm going to go a bit of warm lipstick I think I'm just going to use a little blending brush why is it struggling so much to know? because it's my stream <laughs> so I'm just going to touch it very lightly on the edges Sandra says it looks fine. Okay, it's obviously just our computer having a having yeah. a hissy fit. What's new there then? <laughs> right, I'm just going to very lightly go over the top of this one. So this is going to really bring out the texture of your paper. So this is a good one to do if you're using textured cardstock, like I am. I'm going to kind of do a little bit of shaping, but not too much. Was that your messy mat just come? That was my messy mat just went on the floor. Do you need it? Not at the moment. The string? Probably not. Okay. Because you know, this my ink blending straight on my mat. And I need my ball tool though. It seems to have done a jolly good job of blending. So I use a bit of folder instead. So I just need a little bit just to curve the ends of these petals. Because they are quite small these. So. And I've put the file up on the group as I said so that you can actually download and play with these and do a lot of the same techniques. Okay, so I've done my petals. I'm just going to give it a little push down the middle. Be a bit gentler than you usually would because it's a movie bone tool. Okay. Right, this one I'm going to go the other way, I think. I'm just pressing each rounded bit of the petal and then I can pop this back out again. Yep. Okay, now for assembly. So I want to offset this one a little bit. And kind of pop that on there, I think. Hmm. Set that to one side for a minute. So go with the things that you're happy with. Just going to pop a little drop of glue just on this border. Okay. Just get there eventually. It's taking its time today. I had to clean it all out so it should still. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to twist that, give it a wiggle. <laughs> Might be time to give it a refill actually. Hold it there for a few seconds while it sets. Okay. 
Then we can come in around the back and things are going to fall over on their own. And I think I'm going to want to go roughly sort of in there so that we have a nice little triangle forming. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on the very tip of my leaf. And then as this pushes in, it will spread the glue as it goes. We just need a little bit of a sentiment or something to go with that. So I'm going to bring in my little stamps. And let's go for... Let's go for something a bit different, a bit funky. If I can get them out. <laughs> oh dear. Aren't really welded. I wouldn't say I've never used them, but... Oh dear. Carol says Lily was amazed this morning when you mentioned her name. Yeah. She was my great niece. Made there we go. I was almost kind of there ish. <laughs> I tried my best. <laughs> just clear any excess glue from staple before I put it back in, just so I don't get pulled back up again. Move that out of the way, and you can just bring in any old scrap piece of white card. And I'm going to go for black this time. Now, this could be interesting as my magnetic little stamp block seems to have done a marvellous job of disappearing. So, just going to stamp that on. Gently. See, there we go. Look at that. Stamp block? Who needs a stamp block? <laughs> so, I'm going to pop that to one side out of the way just so we can bring our mat back in. to do a direct um, cut with the text what it would try and do is actually go around each individual letter because it's not a joined up sentiment so what you could do at this point is you could draw a line around it and then scan it in if you wanted to or we can just do a basic shape around it and do a background scan which is what I'm going to do for this one so first of all let's do a background scan just check it's all stuck down well. Okay. So I'm going to go to add. Let's go for a thin strip or banner or something like that. So let's go for that one. So it's got a nice rounded edge. So if we look at our mat, so we can judge it by measurements, we have this lovely measure, measuring guide along the edge of our mat that we can use. So it is rough about three centimeters wide by about just under a centimeter tall so if I go for 20 by 40 and then I can scan it in and just check it so 
going to get rid of the other shapes on the mat. Zoom in. Zoom in again. Okay, so you can see it's got a really big border top and bottom. So what I'm going to do is go into edit. I'm going to tick the um, ratio button, which now means that we can alter our height and width independently. So I want the height to come right down to about there. If we go OK again, zoom in. So you always want to be going back in and double checking. And if you do need to nudge um, the alignment, you can still do that just by using your little arrow keys. Okay. 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 And that is... Leave it on six or six good Yeah, I'll leave it on six. Okay, cut. And that'll work. I knew you were going to do that. Shifted. It's okay, we can fix it. That's why we cut the little flowers. <laughs> so I'm just going to trim this up. Go back to over, to overhead view. Okay. So if it does do that, I'll just trim it roughly right. You can never get it exactly right because it's moved. And then I'm going to bring in a bit of that back just because it's shifted slightly. And then we can do a bit of a shadow to one edge. I might just warm that up with a lip tinge or leave a scatter straw or squeeze lemonade. I think scatter straw might actually be closer to it. And I'm just going to get grab a different blending brush just so we don't contaminate colours. I only want a little bit just to take the whiteness off it because we've got this lemon flower, lemony cream. That's one of the things with making these embellishments work is to try and match your colours as much as possible. Slightly. Come on, stick nicely. Or it wasn't quick enough. Come on. Come on. You can go and do that. Blobby, blobby, blobby. change my mind because I can. I'm just going to grab our little pink brush. Do it very quick. Brushing over the top. Grab a bit more blue. Come on.
This is gonna get in a minute. <laughs> Happy Monday today, is it? Let's go. No. It's because it hasn't been used for a week. Come on. No, it's not going to have it. There isn't a blockage you can get to, right? I'm just going to put this coffee on this edge here. I'm just going to try and get it to form a bit more. Just so that we can see our text. Okay. Then what I'll do in a minute is that I will do a little gem or something to go in there. have a good stream because <laughs> yeah, it's mine that's going to go and mess up. Come on. Doesn't want to stick today. Tracy says foam dot it. <laughs> oh, don't tempt me. Um, why not use one of those fine detail brushes with it? That's Carol. Yeah. I think it's just the glue today, to be honest. Can't say it's overly humid or anything, can we, so... Hold. Still running at 24 in the front room. Oh, we? Mm. Check, did you? Yeah, okay, I'm going to set that to one side to dry off for a bit. I think it needs it. <laughs> right, next I'm going to go for... I know what I'm going to do. Our globe. So, um, back when we were doing the magazine, I did a little bit of an article on using the inbuilt designs and how you can make them look different. So, I, what I did was I've cut both parts of the globe and then done some ink blending on top. So, now I want to turn that into an embellishment of its own right. So, I have. Right set. Little destination stamp. There's, there you go. And Do anything else actually, just to have it out a bit. So, for those of you that are new to watching, we use artist six mats, which mean that you uh, have to clean them with a lint roller, not a baby wipe. Patterns. 
and get down to the frame. And I'm going to do a tag design. So I'm going to go for the, this little narrow one here. And at the moment it's a lot bigger than what we need it. So I'm going to come down as low as it'll let me. So when it gets too low it'll be at you and go OK. OK for part A. We can rotate it. So in this case I want it to go around that way so the hole is at this end. And we can do our background scan again. down a little bit if it will let me now because we've got that hole in our tag we don't want to really um, alter the ratio in actual fact on the machine it will be greyed out anyway but if you wanted to um, kind of override that you could always send it up to canvas and do it in canvas going to zoom right in. That's going to be pretty close, so maybe just a little bit bigger. try and make sure it does it properly this time. <laughs> go okay and then go back home into our pattern and we have some little travel icons so I'm gonna grab a little plane and at the moment it's quite a big plane so we need to shrink it down a bit okay and it doesn't really matter which way up it cuts at this point I'm just going to try and go a little bit smaller than that because I think three centimetres squared is going to be just a fraction too big. So about there. Okay. Oh, hang on. Okay. Sorry, I was busy cleaning that one. These were off cuts from 12 by 12 sheets. So if you're thinking these look like awfully neat scraps, it's going to bring that in from that edge. Have a 
globe, aeroplane and our little destination. I'm just going to grab a nail file. Any cheap nail file will do. I'm just going to slowly sum up these edges. This is um, coordinations cardstock, so I wouldn't recommend cutting it too often on your scanning cut, but for a little um, kind of design like this, it won't hurt too much. So basically, with this one, it when you send it back, it comes back to the underneath colour. a good way of adding a bit of shading without getting out the inks and stuff. And I'm just going to use the edge of my nail file to kind of put in a little bit of detail. So, there we go. Have we still got the close up on screen? No, you're on the overhead. Okay, I'll try and show it on the overhead as well, so you can see it a bit closer. Okay, so hopefully, you can just flip back to screen that's for me so I can check it, seeing it okay. So like you could do like the Eiffel Tower with it. Silhouettes always tend to work better. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with what I've got. Just for now. So we have our destination stamp. Um, let's go for that one. That could be a fun one to stamp. So I'm not worried about this one necessarily being a perfect image. I'm just going to grab a candied apple. Just because I want something that is going to kind of contrast. So misleading when it's red, but right onto red. So. Blah. Especially if you're going to then go and do that. Yeah. <laughs> this is why you just stamp it. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of put it at a jaunty angle. I'm just going to stamp it on. Go. Well, I think again it could do with just that little bit of blending in. So I'm going to go back to my scattered straw. So 
So I'm blending over the top of our um, distress socks, I think it will pick up some of the colour, but that's fine. All adds to the effect. It's supposed to look like it's stamped in their passport. Okay. Yeah, that should be a bit better for you. Thank you. So a lot of what we're doing when we're creating embellishments from scraps is we're making things work with other colours. So you end up doing a lot of almost tinting to get it to the right place. So kind of go with the, the planet kind of uh, that way. It's definitely not Earth though. <laughs> it's all the wrong shape. <laughs> Let's go kind of that way look cool. If you've got some 3D um, foam tape or the squares, you, this should be a good little candidate for that. Is that coming out easier? Yeah, thanks. Keep it in there now, make it behave. Okay, so let's go that way. I'm just going to pop a bit more glue on my tag. Part of it's going to be dangling off, so I don't need to worry about doing all of the tag with glue. So I'm just going to. She says, I'm good and jinx, is it? <laughs> Come on. There we go. A little bit of uh, I'm just going to slide that under and I'm going to hook the airplane wing back through so it looks like it's holding the tag and then I'm going to twist it so that it looks like it is actually moving. There we go. And we have our little embellishment with our plane off to destination adventure. I'm going to grab a few die cuts I have lingering and um, let's see if we can do one from a man's card. So I'm going to pull out a few of the... You're playing one's card, that's good news. Yeah, you're playing Okay. I'm going to pull out a few different papers to play with. So these are all double sided as well, so we have lots of choices as to what we can use. Uh, let's go. I want to use the dots and probably the stripes too. And I might just use the love, I don't know. But let's start off with those. So I'm going to pop my strip onto my mat. I'm going to go home so everything's wiped and start fresh. And I want something that is. Let's go for that one, that'll be funky. So we're going for a shape where you've got two parts so that we can use both sides of the paper. And I want to go a bit smaller than that. Actually, a little bit bigger. Just because of the size of our largest cog. So you're looking about 
five centimeters for that one. So I'm going to go slightly larger than that. So I'm going to go. It's going to be quite a big inversion with this one, so let's go 65. Okay. I'm going to add my first shape to the mat and set and add the second. And the benefit of cutting it out of all one sheet is that we don't have to worry about box being cut out of which colour because you can just flip over one layer. And we can do a quick background scan and just check. go back to my scattered straw just for a little bit of a tint and I'm gonna go with it that way around I think so we can just do a quick blend now make blending is one of the easiest ways of kind of removing that cut edge look with the scan and cut or any of the electronic cutter. So if you don't like that look, it's a good place to start sorting it out. So I'm not going to change my blending brush for this one, I'm just going to go to my next colour, which is Spice Marmalade. So you could go all grungy with steampunk, but you don't have to. And I'm just going to go straight to the orange on this centerpiece. Just because the distress oxides are um, kind of opaque. So if you were to go to the scattered straw on the deep orange print, it would kind of show up on this one. On the dots, it's not so bad. Might not be smack on centre, but it doesn't matter. It's not the aim of the game with this one. So with these embellishments, what they're designed for is if you're going to do like a, a scrapbook layout. So they're not like the main feature part of your design. So. Get inky fingers. Nothing new there. <laughs> very carefully position that hey that is not bad that is not bad 
and if you wanted to you could still pick little bits out of that with some coloured pencils but as I said these are only supposed to be like little secondary elements for your scrapbooking we're going to be doing more scrapbooking next week so we thought these were good little streams to kind of get you back into using the machine if you've had a week off like I have well, I say week off, that's the loosest term ever. <laughs> I've had a week away from the machine and had a week off. <laughs> I've been playing with the machine. Yeah, it's I've played more with in the craft room this past week than I have. It's not on. Okay, so I'm going to actually cut into this a little bit um, just so that I can have it in a couple of different places. Grab my scissors. Any problem with these stamps is that the magnetics they cling to everything. So I'm just going to snip into my die. I think I'm back there actually. And I'm just going to roughly snip there. Mount this behind. So I'm just going to flip it over. Come on, Mr. Glue. thinking upside down. <laughs> there we go. Like that. Okay. I'm gonna map that one there. Uh, Anna's asked how did you make the die cuts? The die cuts are um Mum can probably tell me the dies, um, but they're, they're just literally um, normal dies run through a die cutting machine. I have a platinum and a Gemini here. Um, but these are just a couple out of my stash. So usually when I'm I'm playing with die cuts, I usually end up cutting more than I actually need, and I can always go back and just. Use them on something else or bring them in in other ways into the design. So, okay, just because that's not quite where I want that glue, I'm just going to pop that off. Okay. And this section here, I'm just going to kind of go the diagonal opposite. So it makes it easier for when we can stick it this side. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue just on these two end pieces and a little bit in the middle. The rest of it will be showing. Um, I could always do a stream next week on die cutting techniques if you'd like me to. Um, just pop it in the comments. So um, we did partial die cutting a couple of weeks back, didn't we? So we did. But I don't mind going back over it and showing you some. We have a bit coming on Friday, don't we? About. Oh yes, we have a little bit on Friday that we'll need a die cutting machine. Or rolling pin. <laughs> nah, you definitely gonna need a die cutting machine, I think. Mm, for the pressure. Yeah. Uh, just a steampunk matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, steampunk's kind of my thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
but that's quite nice. It's sunny and kind of bright and cheerful version of steampunk than that. <laughs> um, probably that one, to be honest. I don't think even as... Oh, mind you, that said, I was going to say I'm not going to put a sentiment on it. And then I see something that's like, oh, but that'd be perfect. So, in which case... The stripes aren't quite wide enough to do what I was thinking, I don't think. Oh. Now this could be tricky, because this is usually what I would do with a clear stamp and a stamping platform. So this will either work, or I'll end up going out of the lines. I'm trying to say she's opposite. <laughs> We've been back streaming again after a break. But, uh, that's probably it for a while, isn't it, in terms of having breaks and things? Yeah. Spends out there a bit more stuff and stuff. Yeah. That is not bad. If I have to say so myself, that is not bad. pop that on the mat and because it's quite close to this edge I'm just going to bring it in from the edge of the mat and when we uh, sorry so when, right. when we just, uh, can so, I, yeah go on because <laughs> new so um I think they cut out of paper the cogs are out of card aren't they uh the cogs are out of like a it's kind of rose gold card. Um, if Mum's on, perhaps she can tell me what she cut it out of, because I'm sure there's ones that Mum cut out, not me. <laughs> Fred of raiding my Mum's uh, off cuts. <laughs> Going, oh, that's nice. <laughs> hey, Mum says she's lost you. Oh dear. Um, but yes, uh, a session on die cutting would be wonderful. Okay, yeah, so we, we can, can do that. Next week. Um, because we've got some bits to do with embossing folders, haven't we? Yes. Cans. And lack of embossing folders. Yes. Mm. And yeah. Tracy asked if we enjoyed our break, she definitely missed us. Uh, I didn't get much of a break, to be honest. <laughs> um, I spent the entire time doing the book, so I hadn't had a break as such. Um, we had kind of a weekend off, didn't we? A weekend off. <laughs> so I'm going to go for what, like a little flag. Sorry, sort the camera back. You know when you know that it's on there and you just can't think where it is? That's just... Your flag shapes are any basic shapes, aren't they? Yeah. Towards the bottom somewhere. Yeah, let's go for that one and shrink it down. So, definitely a background scan moment for this one. Because we've got to go on an angle as well. <sighs> Now when we come to do the rotation, I'm going to bring it into the middle. And that probably looks about right. So if I go OK at that and OK again, I'm going to move that back up to where my text is just so I can zoom in and check the fit. need to tweak round that way just a little bit so we can go back into our rotation that's about right 
No, we need to pay attention to this edge here. I'm just gonna go and Ooh. how can I fix that on here without going to the computer? So whoever thinks it's going to be a case and measure twice good ones. So I think I'm going to end up kind of flinging it round the other way just to get it to where I need it. Either that or, 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 or change the shape I think. Because that tail is just going to go too close to that text and you don't want it to overhang and go into your waist area. So delete that for now. And I think I'm just going to do a normal rectangle and I'm going to do the tail myself just because it's easier that way sometimes. Now, when you've rotated at that point, although at the moment I could do it being thinner and longer, you're actually going to kind of distort your shape if you do try and do that. So you'd either have to go back and redo it all, or um, kind of finish it off once it's actually been cut. So what I'm going to do for this one, is just kind of cut it out and then go for it and hopefully you should be okay. Calibration slipping off I think. So, just going to trim that bit off there. The calibration just went off slightly. So, I'm going to cut a little line down the centre. And if we go from corner to the centre and from corner to the centre you get a nice neat little flag like so and so we're going to go back find your 12 o'clock well there we go And I think I'm going to kind of mm. Yeah, let's go that way instead And actually took it in there Yeah, I think that's going to work there So just quickly before I stick it down We can use what's left on the brush, we don't need to reload be just enough just to blend it all in. And if you want to, you can shape it at this point just using your fingers. But most of my scrapbooks end in an album, so I don't tend to go too 3D if I can help it. So I'm just applying a little bit of glue just to the top part of my tag and then lift that up and slide it under and there we go. 
time flies when you're having fun. There you go. It's ten past three already. Yep, that'll do. That'll do for today. And I'll probably carry on making a bit more. Just give me a break <laughs> from the screen for a bit. <laughs> so yeah, the um, next book's coming along well, isn't it? We're about halfway through. Yeah. Hopefully things will be a little bit easier now we found the fonts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, hopefully once that one's done I think I think the vector book's actually gonna be quicker, even though I've got to write it. Because <laughs> mm. it's the copying and the, the sorting out the text and stuff that needs to be taking the time with this one, so oh, this is beautiful, thank you. That's okay. Right. That's it. We'll be back tomorrow? Yes. And you're going to say, and what are we doing tomorrow? And my brain's going to go, Dinu. 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 Was it me in the morning doing my um, foiling shield? I think it's you in the morning doing your foiling with your foiling shield, which is a absolute must see, because Ian invented something that was really quite clever and very useful last week. Which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a must see just for a sheer shock value. <laughs> you, It'll get me back for that one in a bit. <laughs> That's it. Um, we're also back at 11 o'clock as well tomorrow, Anna, so we do two a day. We do an 11 o'clock in the morning and we also do a uh, two o'clock, so we do two a day. Yeah. Where we can. When we can, yes. So 11 o'clock in the morning is usually me if I can. Um, if there's something I can do that helps Natalie at least do a bit more while she's... Uh, yeah, until we, until we get the books done, isn't it? Yeah, really? and then uh, 2 o'clock is usually Natalie's time to... Uh, take over. Take over and play. So I will see you in the morning. I'll be back at 11 o'clock. Don't forget you have Barbara before us at 10 o'clock doing her doodles. I think they're in Holland this week, do they see? Yes, we are. We're doing yeah. windmills. Windmills in Holland. Yeah, I've got to catch up there because I was trying to be good and get some extra done on the book. So. Yeah. So I will catch uh, up at some point. Where's a look? Uh, and also check out Pete and Leslie when they're on and Lou with this as well. So, thank you all very much and we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow.